everybody, welcome to Percussion Axiom TV. I am your host, Tom Burritt, and this is episode 39. We're incredibly excited today because today we start the SteveWeissMusic.com interactive contest that we've been talking about for a long time. If you haven't heard about that, go to SteveWeissMusic.com, click on the video I did about a week ago, outlining the details of the contest and how it works and the prizes. There's also information below that video that tells you how to do things. I don't want to talk about that too much today because we have a lot to get through to start this um, this process and this piece. So today's uh, axiom, it's a guiding principle of the show, we always have one of those, is break it down. When you learn a new piece, it's always good to kind of look through it and figure out, okay, what, what are we up against? How, how can we best to learn this? So I hope that's one thing that we're going to do here together. Um, so Emmanuel Sejourné is a fantastic vibraphone player, and I've seen him play a bunch of times. He's a really, really great player, and he wrote this piece. There's a great story. Actually, it's good to have some background on the piece, too. There's a good story about it in the back of the book that I think I'll just let you read and check that out. Um, so you always want to have a plan. That's today's axiom. So we're going to start in measure one. We've got some French to deal with. Trait de rubato. Well, the second part isn't really French, I don't think. But basically, this means very soft, smooth, sweet. And rubato, of course, means sort of free. When it comes to learning any kind of chorale, which is the first measure here, sort of chorale playing, two things are important. The first thing is you want to learn the right rhythms. I hear too many times where performers don't actually play the right rhythms when they play. For some reason, because the tempo is slow, they forget that it's a dot instead of a half note, dot a half note, and they don't play the right rhythms. Play the right rhythms. That's very important. And you can, you know, I think sometimes they play wrong rhythms because they want to be free, but you need to be free within side the correct rhythms. That's very important. So we're going to do this, take the rolling out completely, um, and don't worry about the mechanics of the rolls. We'll go through that later, um, but we're going to block this. And if you're not sure what that means, check out episodes 30 and 35. We go into blocking and what that is exactly, very specifically. But basically, it's a way to take the rolls out, just play the notes repeatedly so you can focus on the rhythm and the notes. Very, very important. So that's the first thing. We're going to block this. We're also going to play musically. It's very important that you always try to express yourself. There's crescendos here, natural swells, phrasing, etc. That's very important. So I'm going to play this first part for you. Uh, blocking, we're going to do four notes per quarter note. So on the quarter note, going to be four notes. On the next in measure one, on the, on the dotted half note, we're going to have 12 notes and so on. I think that's the best way to learn the sort of harmonic rhythm of the, uh, of the passage and uh, also to review the notes. So that's what this sounds like. Here we go. This is the first measure blocked. Repeat that over and over and over again. That way you'll play the rhythms and all the right notes, take the rolls out of it. That's just the easiest way to go about it. So that's measure one. So we're done with that. That's how I want you to work on that this week. And hopefully that helps. Okay, moving on to, we're gonna work on measure uh, two through nine and just worry about that. So the beginning measure of the chorale and then measure two through nine. This next, uh, these next set of measures, this eight bar phrase, uh, can be, you know, it's pretty basic as far as its phrasing and its structure. Um, you know, measures two and four are basically the same measure. We've got a couple of measures that are transitional. And then we have a little bit slightly different orchestration in the last four bars of it. But more, most generally, this needs to feel like a groove. That's very, very important. Okay, this needs to feel like a groove. So um, he, he talks a little bit about how to actually do that in the French at measure two. He says, um, with the right hand, the right hand plays the ghost notes or plays ghost notes, something to that effect. And ghost notes, you know, those are different levels of sound. Ghost notes like a really soft or almost inaudible note. And then there's tenuto markings that mean a note that's sort of heavier. It's important to, to do that. And then we've got the other notes that don't have any indication. So whenever you're dealing with a groove, it's important to think about um, what I call multiple levels of emphasis. That's really what a groove is. It doesn't matter if it's a drum set thing or a marimba thing or whatever. A groove is anything that has multiple levels of emphasis. So we've got the ghost notes, which are almost inaudible, the regular notes in the middle, and then the tenuto notes that are a little bit heavier. And if you can somehow create that with this passage, I think that's the key. 
Okay, so <clears throat> you want to assign each one of those levels to each of those notes. All right, so um, that's the most important thing with this. So I'm going to play the section very, very slowly, and um, you know measures two and four are the same. Uh, let's see, and then also measures six and I think it's six and eight are also very, very similar with a slight orchestration. The accents are all the same. The feel is all the same. There's just a few little note changes. Um, but I'm going to play this for you here, and uh, you'll see kind of what the what we're talking about as far as this multiple levels of emphasis goes. So this is measures two through nine. I hope it was easy to hear differences between my accents and also the tenuta markings and some of the ghost notes as well. So that's kind of where you want to go with that. Um, let's see, what else is important here? Um, there's a couple little tricky left hand things that you're going to want to watch out for. Um, these little, at the at tail end of each measure we have, and then we have it going up. And then the, the hardest one is getting into measure six where you have, I think that's all of them. That's right, and this is going to happen in the next section too, this piece. But in for, and for that difficult uh, uh, concept or that difficult idea of technically being able to manage that, I use a concept I call hypersticking, and that's simply the idea of making one big stroke that gives us several different strokes. So a measure two would look like that, a measure three would look like, and then a tough one, a measure five at the end would look like. So as soon as we gain tempo on this, and I was a little under tempo on that last pass, but as soon as we gain tempo on that, that's going to become very, very important. And it's also going to be important playing uh, the right-hand parts to the section we're going to talk about next time. So remember, we've got long phrase markings here. This is about multiple levels of emphasis, um, not hearing every 16th note necessarily, thinking it nice and smooth. This is also very soft music. Use the hypersticking uh, at the tail end of these measures. Um, realize, find which measures are exactly the same if you want to memorize it. I think that's what I'm going to do eventually. That's probably the best way to go. All right, so that's the first episode. Um, we've got, remember to block the first uh, measure of this. We'll talk about the roles later. Um, and then multiple levels of emphasis between measures two and nine. Hyper stick the end of each measure. And make sure you create these nice arcs with each of these measures. Okay, so that's episode one. We have just a few minutes here to talk about how you can be interactive. All right, you can leave, um, you can use, you can leave video clips. It's very easy to do video these days. You can upload to video.steveweissmusic.net. You can use Twitter, use at T Burritt, at Steve Weiss Music. You can post on your blog. You can post comments at thomasburritt.tumblr.com and also at steveweissmusic.com. You can email mp3s. Really, it's up to you. It's all up to you. So that's today's episode. We always end with a question of the episode. And today's question is simple. You know. I'm here doing this for you guys, but I'd love to learn from you as well. So how do you break down a piece? Or what, what do you do when you first get a piece and you're starting on it? I would love to hear about that. This is very interactive. I want to learn from you guys, big time. So we're really excited to get this going. Tell all your friends, get as many people involved as possible. And next week on the 22nd, I guess, we will post the next video. The contest is on. It's all about interaction. I want to hear from you. We're going to make notes of who's doing what, where, but you have to let us know. So be sure to let us know. Thanks, everybody, and we'll see you next Monday.